Well, the global recovery is far more fragile than it was earlier this year because of that European debt crisis. That warning comes from World Bank President Robert Zellick. He joins us this morning from the World Bank in Washington. Welcome to In Business, sir. Uh, the IMF warning today that the world's biggest economy uh, will only expand about one and a half percent this year. Uh, what do you see as the likelihood uh, of a U.S. recession? Well, I think we're getting uh, closer to the risks of double dip. I still don't, wouldn't predict it, but it really depends on how these events coming out of yeah. Europe are managed. Well, when you say uh, that the global economy is far more fragile, one of those worries for you is what's happening in Europe. We saw that global coordinated dollar funding action by central banks just last week. Is that the kind of move that would help stabilize this? Well, it helps stabilize it, but what you've seen so far are actions coming out of Europe that really buy time by providing liquidity. So whether it's trying to deal with the bonds of some of the countries that have been in trouble, whether it's trying to provide liquidity to the banking system, um, I don't mean to denigrate uh, buying time, but the question is how the time will be used. And the fundamentals still going back to the question of what they're going to do with the combination of sovereign debt, banking system, and for some countries, competitiveness. That's what they have to turn to. So is it the right time for us to be talking about uh, creation of a euro bond? Well, that is one tool. So sometimes people get fascinated with one uh, tactic or, or method. I think the, the critical issue for the European political leaders to face and to convince their parliaments and publics on is which way do they want to go? Do they want to have a deeper fiscal union? And Eurobond would be one method, but there are a lot of other ways you could deal with that. Or are they willing to face the consequences of over indebted and, and uncompetitive members, which would take them in another direction? But I think the time for muddling through is really about run its course. Yeah, a headline today in the Wall Street Journal that the Bank of China uh, has basically told some European financial institutions that their line of credit ran out. They won't trade derivatives with them in local markets. They named BNP Paribas, uh, Sokgen, a few others. Are we uh, at a real crisis point yet with global funding? Are you concerned about that? Well, I mean, your, your listeners are people who watch markets, so I'm sure it's not a surprise that you've you started to see some illiquidity problems for some of the banking institutions uh, through term funding and others, and that's one reason the ECB has stepped in. So mm -hmm. that, I think, can ward off the crisis. So whether it's the ECBs, whether it's this EFSF to try to deal with some of the problems, but as I've mentioned, I don't think that deals with the fundamentals. The fundamentals really do come back to these questions of what are you going to deal with the sovereign debt of countries that really can no longer pay. And if, uh, depending on how you handle that, it's going to have the effect on the bank's capital. And there are some countries that are frankly unlikely to be able to take the steps to return to competitiveness in the current system. So it's, it's the interrelationships of those three. And these require also at some point some attention to the structure of growth. So the U.S. has, frankly, some similar longer-term issues. It's not quite in the bullseye at, the, at this moment, um, but over the next year or two, it's also going to have to face up the fundamentals. And that's what the market is reacting to, in my view. Should we be talking about China and other uh, developing markets uh, bailing out Europe or supporting it? Is that a realistic thing? Well, I, I've been, I've been uh, sort of uh, putting that down a little bit because I just think people are looking for a silver bullet, and I don't think that the Chinese are necessarily going to bail out Europe. Um, of course, there's always a chance to have uh, some of the Chinese sovereign funds buy various assets, perhaps if there's various privatizations and things like that. But I think, uh, you know, so far, the big picture from China and the emerging markets is that they've supplied about half of global growth, so they've provided a benefit to the system. But what I've started to warn people about this week is we're just starting to see the ripple effects of the contagion from the Eurozone in the U.S. go to developing country markets. We've seen it in wider bond spreads. We've seen it in equity markets. Obviously, their exports have fallen off. And the thing we're going to watch closely now is the domestic demand in those countries. So. Again, this has to be dealt with cooperatively. So far, the developing countries have actually been doing their part of the game. The developed countries have to step up. Uh, sir, you were just talking to us about what essentially is that debt disease of the developing world in some ways starting to infect the developing powers. What are you seeing right now in terms of ripple effects? Well, uh, it really started in August, um, and we've started to see, on average, emerging market bond spreads expand about 70 basis points. Um, equity markets uh, have taken hits like those in the developed world. 
Um, you'd already seen in the course of this crisis a big fall off in exports to the developed world, <clears throat> so they hadn't uh, recovered. But the part that um, we have to watch most closely now is the same confidence effects you've seen in U.S. and Europe could start to affect either business investment or consumer demand on the developing world. So um, we've just seen some initial flickers of this. We're going to have to watch the data going forward. But the point that I think it raises is the interconnectedness of these issues. So you know, uh, the issues in the Eurozone aren't going to stay in the Eurozone. And particularly since the developing world countries now really have less space, for example, less fiscal space they did in 2008, this has been the part of the world that's been growing. And uh, that has helped the developed world. So it shows some of the dangers of the contagion. Yeah, we had the former head of the TARP program here in the U.S., uh, Neil Kashkari, on this program talking about, you know, break out your 2008 playbook because this uh, debt crisis is becoming a financial one that's going to be a, a global risk. Do you see at this point um, financial protectionism on the horizon? Well, I think in an environment like this, you have to watch out for all types of protectionism. So far, the, the trade protection has been held off because in emerging markets, they've been a little worried about inflation. So they've kept barriers down. But you've seen uh, in the recent weeks some, uh, some increased barriers in the machinery sector coming out of Brazil. And I think that uh, with the turmoil, there'll be more political pressure for this. But I think Neil's point goes to a, a key one uh, for the Europeans with the EFSF, which is that uh, you know, given the uncertainty, it would make sense to have the EFSF have the full range of tools, whether investing in banks, whether guarantee power, various lendings, buying bonds. But what I keep emphasizing is that is a way of dealing with the fundamental liquidity issue. At mm -hmm. some point, the key countries are going to have to decide what type of fiscal union, if they're going to have a fiscal union, and this could take different forms. You've had assumption of debt ideas. You have creation of new uh, market and, and institutional yeah. disciplines. They need to use the time they have now to start to go in that direction or manage the consequences of, of the other problems. You mentioned that perhaps some of these countries may not be able to get back to a competitive place. Today we saw S&P upgrade. Uh, the credit quality of Turkey, its investment grade now, after it downgrades Italy. Are we at the point where the global order is shifting? Well, one of the huge changes over the past 10 years is the effect of the emerging markets. Now, obviously, you have to distinguish, but, you know, I pointed out China alone is using over 50 percent of the world's cement and about 47 percent of the steel and iron ore. So this has been a major, major shift. This can yeah. be good. This can create multiple poles of growth, but we have to realize it's still connected. All right. Uh, Bob Zellick, thank you so much for making time. I could continue talking to you um, for a while here. Anyone who hasn't read uh, your editorial on Politico, pick it up on the importance of uh, gender equity and economic growth as well.